Um, <clears throat> hello, everybody, and welcome to Kangaroo English. Um, I'm Christian, and this is another live English class. Um, I hope that you are all well. Um, I hope that you are all happy, and I hope that you are all ready to to study today, to learn something new, and um, <laughs> I don't know. We can we can have some fun. Um, it's a it's a very nice day here today. Uh, I think it's about it's about sixteen degrees. It's very sunny. It's um it's fabulous. It makes me feel happy to to be alive. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I'm here today to answer any questions you have about um, about English, pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar, anything you want to ask me. I'm here. Um, yeah. So um, yes, hello. Um, to students from from all over the world, uh, Singapore, uh, Turkey, Slovakia, um, Italy. Um, it is an absolute uh, pleasure to to have you in this class today. Um, <clears throat> I thought that um, we could start with a little game. Okay, a little game. So this game is basically, um, I will ask you a question about me with three possible answers. So you have to choose which answer is correct for me, okay? So the first question is, which of these pets would I like the most, okay? So, which of these pets do I want? So, option A is a reindeer. Do you know what a reindeer is? You know, Santa Claus, reindeer, <laughs> pulling, pulling Santa's sleigh, okay? Option B is a parrot. Okay. Parrot, like a, like a pirate with a parrot, okay? And the third option is a monkey. So, do you think that I would prefer a reindeer, a parrot, or a monkey as a pet? <laughs> That's the first question. <laughs> and um, the second question is, what do I hate the most? Is it being hungry? Being hungry, yeah, needing food. Is it not being able to sleep? Or is it having nothing to do? Mm. Okay. So, they are the two questions I want you to answer about me. Okay. Which pet do I prefer and what do I hate the most? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yes, it's true, actually. The pet that I would prefer the most would be a kangaroo. Um, now... Maybe you know or you don't know that, that I am Australian. But even though I am Australian, um, I didn't have a kangaroo as a pet. I never went to school on a kangaroo. Um, it's, it's a normal city. Where, where I'm from is a normal city. Um, there are no koalas and kangaroos running around. <laughs> but... I, I would like a, a kangaroo as a as a pet. It's um, it could be really interesting. <laughs> yeah. So parrot. Um. Um. <laughs> um. Um. Monkey. Yes. Um. Okay. Um. Well, now now I'll tell you the um. I'll tell you my, my answers. Um, I think, yeah, probably I would prefer to have a parrot as a pet because um, I, could, I could teach it to speak and I could teach the parrot to say very naughty words. 
<laughs> that would be good fun. Um, <clears throat> and which one do I hate the most? I hate having nothing to do. I, I get bored very easily. I always need to, to be doing something, uh, reading or, or, or anything. So yes, I hate being bored the most. Um, uh, okay. Um, I don't know if you know, but Australians have a very, um, what can we say, uh, uh, a strange sense of humor, uh, a sarcastic sense of humor, okay? Um, they like to, Australians like to um, tease people. Do you know what it means to tease? Uh, tease is like um, another synonym, okay, another verb is to make fun. It means that um, when, you, when you make a, a, a joke, uh, you are, you are um, difficult to describe. <laughs> um, okay, imagine that um, a person is very, very tall. Very tall. In Australia, we would call this person shorty. Because we are, we are making fun of the fact that they are very tall. We are teasing them about being tall. And um, Australians really like this, this type of humor, okay? So, when, when a tourist goes to Australia, it is obligatory to tell them the story about drop bears, okay? So, maybe you know about kangaroos and you know about koalas, but do you know about drop bears? Oh. Drop bears are very dangerous bears, similar to koalas, small, okay, but vicious, ferocious. And the problem for tourists is that the, these bears, these drop bears, they live in the trees, okay? And so a tourist is walking down the street and a drop bear drops onto the tourist and, ah, <laughs> and attacks them. <laughs> now, now this is, this is, it's obligatory to tell this story to, to tourists in Australia. And the tourists are walking around thinking, oh my God, drop bears <laughs> going to attack me. But of course, um, drop bears don't exist. They're, they're not real. This is, this is a story that we tell tourists to tease them, to make fun of them. Do you understand? <laughs> um, so be careful of drop bears when you are in Australia. <laughs> Um, okay, um, let me have a look at some, at some of your grammar questions. Um, so Carmelo, Carmelo wants to know about, about the prepositions, um, to and for and of. So as, as I have explained in some previous classes, um, prepositions can exist independently or they can exist with another verb, okay? So, it really depends. It really depends. So, for example, um, Um, so here we here we have the verb look, okay, look. But if I put for on the end, okay, look for, then this transforms look into a phrasal verb, look for. 
which means to search, okay, to search, to, to try to find something, look for. So, in this case, the preposition is part of the verb, okay? But here, I have a present for, mm, I have a present for you, a present for me. Here, this preposition is independent. This indicates the destination of the present. Who is the present going to be given to, okay? So in this case, it's an independent preposition, and it means something different. So it's not easy to explain a pre one preposition quickly, okay? What you should do is, is look at some of my classes or other classes about prepositions of position and prepositions of movement, um, etc. And then you can understand when and why to use them, okay? But yes, I understand that prepositions in English, it's something very difficult and very frustrating. Um, but when you are the master of prepositions, well, you will, you will be the master of English. <laughs> uh, okay, let me look to see uh, if we have another question here. Um, okay, um... What are we doing? Okay, uh, so Victoria has a question about why we don't use the present tense in this sentence. Okay, let me let me have a look. Um, I wonder if we mentioned. To do it by Friday, okay. So Victoria wants to know um, why we are using the future um, when we are, maybe you think we are talking about the present. I wonder if we will manage to do it by Friday. So maybe to make the sentence more simple, we can remove here. We can say, I wonder if we will do it by Friday. Okay. So the, the reason that we use the future here is because of this. Okay by Friday. When we say by Friday, we um, are actually visualizing a future time, right? Because by Friday, I am imagining that on the Friday, will it be finished? Will it not be finished? Uh, okay, so this, this construction by Friday, by 12 o'clock, um, by, 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 I don't know, by, by tomorrow. All of these constructions, we would use these with the future tense, okay? With will, uh, or with going to, because really it's the future, okay? Um, do you, do you know about the word in English, willy-nilly? Willy-nilly means that a person does something in a, in a chaotic, in a disorganized way. So, for example, imagine that you are um, painting your room. You're painting your room. But, you know, you don't start here and paint perfectly across like this. You paint a little bit here, and then a little bit here, and a little bit... 
you paint willy-nilly. And this is um, from the, the old English, um, the old English expression. Will ye or will ye not? So, will you? Will you or will you not? Are you going to do it or are you not going to do it? You can't, you can't decide. You are like a crazy person. You are willy-nilly. I don't know, I don't know. So, it means that you are going to do something in a chaotic way. Um... I have a little issue with electricity. Just one second, okay? George? <laughs> George, the electricity is gone Sorry about that. Um, sometimes the electricity has problems. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. So, um, yes, willy-nilly. This, this is a good word that you can use to describe something that is chaotic, okay? Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to look for another question. Uh, 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 Okay, so um, Kadek was wondering um, about the different parts of speech, about the difference between nouns and adjectives and adverbs. Um, so I think it's 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 quite easy to explain the the difference between these three. Okay. So, um, yes, we have a, a noun and an adjective and an adverb, okay? So, a noun, another name for a noun, uh, a synonym for noun, is basically name. Nouns are names for things or names for people. So... Telephone is a noun, because it's the name of this object. The internet is a noun. It's the name of something. So, most words in any language are nouns. Okay? Then we have adjectives. Okay? And adjectives, in general, they describe nouns. Okay? They describe nouns. They describe um, things like the characteristics of a noun, like how big is it, how small is it, what color is it, what material. But also they can describe who it belongs to. Is it yours or mine? Um, and lots of other things, okay? Adjectives give extra information about nouns, okay? Now, adverbs, they describe verbs, okay? They describe verbs. So, they describe how the verb is done. So, if you have a verb like walk, you could say you walk quickly or you walk slowly. Okay, um, and more abstract characteristics of verbs as well. Okay, so this is basically uh, very quick, 
very simple explanation of these, these three things, okay? It's not comprehensive, but I think it's sufficient for somebody who is learning English. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so, um, Marwa wants to know when to use singular or plural with a collective noun. Mm, okay. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> let's let's have a look. So here we have people. This is a collective noun because it's a, a group of people, right? So um, what verb conjugation do we use with this? Um, for example, do we say People am or are or is. Mm. Well, in this case, it would be people are. Okay. It's like a plural. Okay. And again, the same with sheep. Okay. It's like a sheep. We would say people are uh, sheep are. Okay. But then we have some collective nouns which are which take a singular verb like everybody. This is everybody is. Because the strange thing about everybody is here at the end we have the singular body everybody, okay? Now um the, if you want to know if it's uh, singular or, or plural, then you can look in your dictionary and it should be marked. In, in a good dictionary, it will have the mark. Or an online dictionary will also tell you if it's singular or plural. Okay? And then it's a question of memorizing. Okay? Uh, okay. Um... <laughs> Not being able to sleep. If maybe this is this makes me a little bit of a nerd. This makes me a little bit of a freak. But if I can't sleep, then normally I get up and I study grammar, <laughs> or I watch videos about English, and um, I'm a little bit obsessed with with English. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Venchi, Venchi Grigorov, my favorite Russian gangster, he wants to know, do I like Roger Federer, and can I explain how he knows four languages? Okay, Roger Federer, um, really, I'm not very interested in tennis, um, but Roger Federer is an amazing sports person, an amazing sportsman. Um, obviously a very talented person. And the reason he speaks four languages is because um, he's Swiss, no, from Switzerland. And so Switzerland is in the middle of Italy, France, Germany. So it's natural that um, he speaks these languages. And I think at school in Switzerland, they speak, they learn French and German, and Italian. And then, of course, he speaks English because he is an international sports person and English is the um, de facto language of international communication. And so if he wants to do interviews, if he wants to travel, communicate, he has to learn English. Um, and I think this is the reason, a simple reason, why he speaks four languages. Hmm. Okay, Rashid has, has a, a great question. What's the difference between waves and ripples? Hmm. Oh. 
Oops. So um, a wave, um, now <laughs> if, if you are um, some sort of um, like fluid scientist, if you are an expert in fluid mechanics, maybe my explanation will be totally wrong. But for somebody learning English, my explanation is, is good, okay? Um, a wave, I believe, is generated by, by natural forces, right? The tide going up and down, maybe wind, um, currents. They generate waves, okay? And waves um, are... are um, you know they're big and they they have this the classic the classic shape like a wave right this is my wave <laughs> beautiful this is a wave right you can you can surf on a wave but a ripple a ripple i think is generated um, from something external like if you drop a stone in the water, you generate a ripple, okay? And I think also the difference is maybe it's like, like circular, like concentric circles, right? Like this, a ripple, okay? And also a ripple is, is something small, okay? It's something small. It's, um, you cannot surf on a ripple, right? Um, and, and actually this, this word ripple and also this word wave, we, we use them in lots of, of idioms in English. Uh, for example, um, So, for example, um, you can say that I, I opened the door and there was a wave of people, a, a lot of people. Or you can have a wave of success, a big a moment, a big moment of success, a wave of success. And then you can have a ripple effect, which is similar to if we drop the stone in the water, we have the consequences, the ripples. So, for example, um, if we um, cut taxes, if the government cuts taxes, it has a ripple effect. And maybe the hospitals don't have enough money and the police don't have enough money. These are consequences of an action. Hopefully that, that helps to explain some, um, some, uh, some vocabulary for you, some new expressions. Um, Ippolito Franco. Ippolito. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, your name, I really like your name. Hippolito, but do you know do you know what is the origin of the word hippopotamus? Um, so you know what uh, a hippopotamus is, right? A big, a big African animal, big, strong. Hippopotamuses are very dangerous. They kill a lot of people. More people than win the lottery are killed by hippopotamuses. Is it hippopotamuses or hippopotami? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Um, but the origin of this word is, um, is Greek. Okay. So hippo means horse. And potamus means river. 
Okay? So basically, a hippopotamus is a river horse. A horse that lives in the river. <laughs> now, <laughs> I don't know who gave a hippopotamus this name. Because a hippopotamus does not look anything like a horse. <laughs> is it just me? But if I saw a hippopotamus, I wouldn't say, hey, look at this big grey horse. <laughs> this, this river horse. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, that's terrible. So, so your name, Hippolito, maybe... Maybe some in the past you are related to a horse. I don't know. Maybe your your family were, you know, uh, um, raised horses. I don't know. <coughs> anyway, <coughs> your question is, what is the outback? The outback. The outback is a part of Australia. Okay. Now, if we think about Australia, Australia is like a like a round sort of shape. Okay. And ninety five percent of the people live on the coast. Okay. Nobody lives in the middle because in the middle it is. A terrible, hot, arid desert with absolutely nothing, no water, no trees, no life. The, the desert in the middle of Australia is called the Nullarbor. Nullarbor is, of course, Latin and it means no trees. Nullarbor. Basically, <laughs> the name of the majority of Australia is no trees, because there is nothing, okay? Now, so the outback is basically 95% <laughs> of Australia. It is any place where it's dry, hot, desert, and nobody lives. Nobody um, would you like me to tell you a little story about um, the Aboriginal culture in Australia? Um, because the Aboriginal culture in Australia is one of the, well, is the longest continuing civilization in the history of the world. Um, it's an incredible culture. Um, and they have a creation myth. They have a, a myth about where did the world come from. And um, basically, their, their, their myth involves um, giant snakes and other animals that carved the landscape. Okay? Carved the landscape. And during this time... Um, when the, the earth was being created, it was called the dream time. Okay. And, and during the dream time, you know, the earth was being formed by, by creatures, the rivers were formed by giant snakes, etc. Okay. And this is a very important um, time in the history of the Aboriginal people. And the Aboriginal people have also something very interesting, which is called walkabout. Uh, walk about. Um, and basically, what happens is, one person from a tribe will go into the desert alone with no sleeping bag, with no water, with no food, nothing. They will just go into the desert for maybe 
two days, maybe two weeks, maybe two months. And then one day, they will come back, they go walk about. And even now, um, pe Aboriginals who live in um, big cities also go walk about. I, I remember um, years ago, um, I had a friend and one day he just disappeared, completely disappeared. And after, um, I think it was about six weeks, after six weeks, he, he, he suddenly showed up, he popped up. And I said, where, where have you been? I was worried about you. And he said, I went walkabout. I don't know what he did. I don't know where he went, but he, he disappeared. It's very strange. <laughs> um, okay. Um, let me let me look for um, for another for another question about grammar to answer. Um, okay. Okay. Um, 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 um. <laughs> uh, <laughs> David says that drop bears, you remember the drop bears, the drop bears, they don't like Vegemite. This is, this is true. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I'm just reading your comments. I'm looking for, uh, um, for some questions. Um, okay. So, um, um, Adelson wants to know what is the difference between to discover and to figure out. Mm, okay. Okay. Um, so if if you are a scientist, then you could discover something, or also you could figure out something. So what's the difference? Um, I think that really it depends what words you're using with it. Okay? Um, what are the collocations? So for example, I think you could discover a technique or you could discover a cure. But figure out talks more about maybe a problem. Okay, you figure out a problem or you figure out a solution. Um, so I think in some ways they are very similar because you have a process of finding something new, finding some new information. Okay, so they're similar in this way, but they are different because of the words that we use with them. Okay. Collocations in English are very important, um, and and my my class on Friday, which I finished editing this morning, um, is going to help you to um, discover collocations like this, to um, to understand uh, when you can use discover or figure out. Okay. Um, Cynthia, Cynthia Zapata, or Cynthia Zapata. She wants to know, what is the difference between to me and for me? Mm. Okay. Um, so here I've put I've put three examples on the board. Okay, give to me, give for me, and a present for me. So this one here in the middle, okay, is not correct because the verb give goes with to. Okay, it's give to somebody. You cannot give for. Okay.
So in this case, the, the to is indicating the destination. It's to, I give it to you, I give it to him, okay? But here, it's very similar, right? I could say, um, I have a present for me, or I have a present for you. So also this is indicating um, the destination, right? So what's the difference? You can see that the difference depends on the verb, right? So give to is correct, but give for no, and have for yes, it's good, but have to, no, have to is something totally different. So to and for, it depends, okay? And this is why you need to study your combinations of verb and preposition. You need to study your phrasal verbs, okay? Because it depends, depends on the verb. Um, okay. Mario Mario wants to know what is the difference in pronunciation between these two words? Um, now, first, it's very important, we can see that we have an R, okay? So, this is really important that we have, we physicalize the R, okay? Okay, but the second thing is that we have a difference in the sound of the vowel, okay? And the reason is that there is a, it's not a rule, but it's very common, okay? If we have a single consonant, okay, with an E, then this here is long, the long vowel. But if we have a double consonant, here, with the E, then we have a short vowel. So, in general, if you see a single consonant with an E, or if you see a double consonant with an E, then the vowel will be different. This will be the long vowel, and this will be the short vowel. So this will be O, like the letter in the alphabet O, O, and this will be o, oh, o, oh, o, oh. okay? So, the pronunciation of this is hose, hose. And you can see that the o is a diphthong. We have to have the change in the mouth during the vowel. Oh, you see my mouth is open at the beginning. Oh, and then my mouth closes. And watch my lips come forward as well, okay? Oh, okay? So we have this movement. Hose, okay? And then here we have the short O, okay? Uh, with this and with the different vowel sound, horse. Horse. Okay, so it's like o, o, o. Very similar to if we have the word or. Okay, or. Now, it depends on your dialect. Okay, but again, you can see that this this is a diphthong. Okay, we have or, or. So we start small. Okay, and then we open. Oh, uh. watch from the side. Oh, uh. oh. Uh. So this is horse, horse. The same as this word here, or oh. horse. So it's a big difference, right? Hose, horse. So that is a British English pronunciation, okay? It will depend 
on 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 the dialect that you are learning. Okay. <laughs> um, Marius has asked a really um, a really interesting question, which is, mm, what is the correct pronunciation of the word of this word? Okay. Now, this, this is a word that I always use in class to give a student an idea of the fundamental basics of English pronunciation. Okay? So, the, 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 the basics of English pronunciation is that we are, number one, obsessed with consonants. We are absolutely obsessed with consonants. In, in other languages, uh, especially in French, okay, and also in Spanish, um, I don't know about mm, Arabic or, or Chinese or, or I don't know, okay, but other languages, consonants, meh, whatever, okay, other languages are obsessed with vowels, but English is obsessed with consonants, okay. And um, the second thing, okay, about English, about English pronunciation, okay, is that we eliminate vowels, okay? We love to eliminate vowels. Okay? Um... <clears throat> I'm sorry, my, my writing is terrible. I know that my writing is bad. I'm sorry. Um, eliminate, oh my God. <laughs> okay. Um, for example, in the word comfortable. Okay. Now, we can only eliminate vowels after the stress. After the stress, we can eliminate vowels. And what's really interesting is that the more posh your accent, the more refined, the more elegant your English accent, okay, the more vowels you eliminate. The Queen of England, she has no vowels when she speaks, okay? So, where is the, the stress in, in, in this word? Okay, the stress is here. Okay? Comfortable. Now, the Queen of England would eliminate all of the vowels after this. So she would say... She would say this. And this is considered the most correct accent that you will hear in English, okay? This is the, the, the pronunciation of newsreaders, of journalists, of, um, of people who, who are... Um, this, this is, this is a, a prestige accent. And so the pronunciation is comfortable. <laughs> it's ridiculous, I know. Comfortable. So here we have football. All together. Okay? Comfortable. Another example. <laughs> so here we have the stress here. Okay? So all of these vowels we eliminate. Fidgetables. <laughs> Vegetables. <laughs> and, and that's why I said that we are obsessed with consonants. Because we are eliminating vowels, but it's very important that I hear every single consonant. Vegetables. I have to pronounce all of them. Okay? Now, 
This is a reason why English can sometimes be really difficult, because in most languages you don't have consonants together like this. Lots of consonants together.、Um, normally you have some space, right? So another English word which is difficult to pronounce is is a word like this, because we have. We have three consonants together, crisps, crisps, and you know this this makes English sometimes difficult to pronounce. But in general, what you want to do if you want to sound English is you want to eliminate your vowels after the stress, and then you will sound like the Queen of England. Okay, so、um, let me think of another word.、Um, Now this is another example, okay, of the crazy the crazy pronunciation. Now, in this word accent, we have the stress on the first vowel. So the Queen of England would actually eliminate this. She would say accent. <laughs> this is this is what she says accent, okay, so. If you want to sound posh, if you want to sound like the Queen, goodbye vowels, goodbye. <laughs> um, okay. Um, uh, okay. Um, um, some questions. I have. There's some questions here about verbal tenses. When do you use present perfect, and when do you use、um, present perfect progressive, etc.? I recommend that. Recently, I made a video about all of the verbal tenses in English, all of them, all twelve of them. If you watch this video, I I hope that you will understand how、um, to use the the different tenses in English. Okay.、Um, Um, 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 um. So again, yes.、Yeah, so here's another question about how do I pronounce uh, uh, this word? So、um, again, here we have we have our stress at the beginning. Okay, interested. So again, you want to try to if you want to sound posh, eliminate your vowels. Interested. Interested. Okay. <laughs> Um, you should you should listen. Try and find a video on on YouTube of the Queen speaking, and listen to her her accent. There's no vowels. There's no vowels. <laughs>、um, okay. Um, so Vitali has a question about、um, italics in English.、Mm, italics. Um, do you know what italics are? Italics are、um, when the when we have normal writing. Okay.、Um. <laughs> that that is a terrible terrible example of italics. <laughs> But basically, we have normal writing, which is which is up like this, right? Which is straight, which is straight, and then we have italics, which is on an angle. Okay. Now, italics has various uses in English. Okay. One one reason we use italics is for emphasis. You could use capitals. You could say, for example, name in in capitals like this. But the the problem is that this is like I am shouting at you, name, name. <laughs> but this is for emphasis, but a soft emphasis. Okay, name. 
Also, we, so this is the, the primary reason. The primary reason is for emphasis, okay? And the second reason is if we have a word from Latin or French or um, Greek from another language, some people put that word in, in italics to, to show that it is not a native, a native English word, okay? But this is not an obligation. This is a, a, a style choice. So it depends on the person, depends, you know, why they're writing it. Um, but for example, you know, if I was using some, some Latin in an email, maybe I would, um, I would put it in italics. So for example, you know, um, Uh, today, today I have my Vedi Mecum. This telephone is my Vedi Mecum. Vedi Mecum is Latin and it means come with me. So a Vedi Mecum is something that you always have with you. For example, this telephone is always with me because I use it to communicate with all of you. <laughs> um, so, probably if I was writing this in an email, I would put Vedimikam in italics to show that it's not uh, an English word. Okay? Hopefully that helps to explain um, italics. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 Sankit, uh, there's a student called Sankit who says that <laughs> he is studying fluid mechanics this semester. So... Maybe you can help, um, help me to understand if there's a scientific difference between a ripple and a wave. Um, please tell me. Um, I'd be very curious to know. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I'm going to look for one, for one final question because we only have three minutes of class. Um... um um, so, okay, I, I think this is a, this is a great, a great question about, about two English words, somewhat and whatsoever. Mm. These are, um... These are two words that are used in English for emphasis, okay? But um, they are actually really, really old words, okay? Um, and they have different meanings, but they are fantastic to add emphasis to your sentence. Somewhat is very similar to quite. Or... Um, Quite or what, what's what's another what's another word similar to quite quite or um, maybe you could say um, uh, a little. Okay, so it means that you want to um, say that something is a little bit. It's quite, but not totally. Like for example, um, I could say that my telephone is quite old. Not very old, not 100% old, but quite old. A little old. It's somewhat old. Okay, it's a bit more posh. My telephone's somewhat old, and it's somewhat scratched. You see, from my pocket, my telephone is somewhat scratched. So, um, great word. And then we have whatsoever. Whatsoever is used in a negative sentence, and it means like, not at all. Not, not one bit. Uh, 
For example, if somebody is very, very, very stupid, you could say, you have no brains whatsoever. Okay? You have not one bit of brain. Not, not at all brain. Okay? <laughs> and you can see that whatsoever goes at the end, the final word. Whereas somewhat, somewhat goes before. Okay? So, um, I somewhat enjoyed, no, that's bad, that's bad. I enjoyed teaching this class a lot. It was really, really enjoyable. Um, and I didn't hate this class whatsoever. Okay? <laughs> um, so, unfortunately, it is now two o'clock. Um, I have to go. Uh, there are a lot of classes this afternoon. Lots of children coming, and I have to go and prepare. Um, I'm sorry that I didn't have time to answer all of your questions, but down in the description box, you will find a link to the official Facebook group, and you can ask me anything you want there, and when I have time, I will answer your questions. Um, but thank you all very much for watching. Thank you for, for coming to this class. Um, and don't forget that all of you are the reason that I come to work every day. Um, I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. And I'll see you in class. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you.